Most people who own or work in forests do so because they love green. But sometimes the best way to view a forest is with red, or rather, infrared. Color infrared imagery, which displays the otherwise invisible near-infrared spectrum as visible red, reveals aspects of forest health and composition that would otherwise remain hidden to the human eye, or at least harder to detect. Where traditional RGB photography shows a uniform canopy of green, CIR, or color infrared imagery, shows us, in a very real sense, a whole new world, highlighting subtle differences between tree species, exposing signs of stress or disease, and painting clear boundaries between forest types that would otherwise blend together. That's because forest foliage reflects infrared light much better than visible light. Remember, plants appear green to us because they absorb red and blue for photosynthesis while reflecting green. So whatever colors we see with our eyes are made far more vibrant in the infrared spectrum. So just as many plants have unique shades of green, every species has a unique infrared signature under normal circumstances, and that signature can vary based on the health of the tree or time of year. So let's look at just one example. Here's a small plantation as seen under normal RGB imagery. It looks like a single stand, but if we look with the infrared spectrum, we can see that these are very clearly two separate stands of two distinct species. Red pine and some species of spruce, if I had to guess. So looking at the infrared spectrum allows us to clearly see these differences. And if you're wondering why they reflect infrared, the answer is basically, they have to. It's a thermal regulation mechanism. Infrared light is particularly good at producing heat, and absorbing this light would potentially damage the delicate photosynthetic machinery of the leaf and disrupt metabolic processes. So this miraculous adaptive trait helps plants maintain optimal operating temperatures. That's why you can go out on a hot summer day and your lawn really isn't all that hot to the touch relative to virtually any other surface. On this channel, I like to highlight just how amazing and specialized trees are, and their ability to reflect infrared light is just a small part of it. Every leaf is like a small nuclear reactor, and the infrared reflectance is like a neutron absorber or something, preventing the facility from cooking itself. It really is amazing. But I recently made color infrared imagery available on Silvicultural, so I wanted to show you how you can use it practically to manage your forest. All right, so here we have some pretty standard RGB aerial photography. So the forest is displayed as a conventional green. And as you can see, we see some different shades and some shapes and some shadows, but it's kind of hard to make out what exactly is going on. Um, maybe here, for example, we have some different species, but that also could be some terrain distortion. Um, and maybe some of the darker colors are just the shadows from the trees. It's hard to use this with a great deal of accuracy. Now let's turn on the CIR, color infrared. Now, first off, uh, one thing that should be made clear is this isn't actually the infrared spectrum, obviously because we can't see the infrared spectrum. So this is color infrared, also called false color. So basically what's happening is they're taking the near infrared spectrum and then converting it into a visible red color. So it's actually pretty similar to, if I have my terminology right, astrophotography where they're showing you pictures of celestial bodies like nebulas and galaxies. A lot of those photographs are shown in false color because those bodies are emitting um, different spectrums like infrared or ultraviolet. So uh, the photograph is kind of altered in order to show that emission. But of course, in this case, the trees aren't emitting infrared radiation, they are reflecting it. So it's all about measuring that reflectance, which we'll talk about more in a second. Um, but what we can see right off, different from the RGB, is that we can see a lot more detail, especially in the composition of the forest. Uh, we can see very clear differences in the colors and the overall shape of the trees even compared to the RGB. So for example, right here, uh, we do have much smaller crowns. Uh, right here, we do have a higher composition of softwood. Uh, those darker colors are softwood trees. Uh, so this is probably a 50-50 softwood hardwood stand right here next to a pretty young stand of pole-sized hardwood. Um, here we have probably what looks like either dead tops or, yeah, those look like maybe dead aspen trees or dying. So this to me is really where color infrared shines. It is very easy to differentiate 
different uh, types of forest composition. And of course, when we're talking about forest management, the basic unit of any forest management plan is going to be your stand. And so this easily allows you to delineate different stands on your property or in your forest. So just an easy example right here that we can see. And by the way, I should point out, this is actually Baxter State Park in Maine. Uh, so they're older forests that aren't disturbed by commercial logging as much. There are some areas that are logged in the park. Uh, but it, it kind of shows us more clearly some differences in the health, uh, size, and composition of the forest relative to a more managed stand. So anyway, uh, right here what we can see with these, I'm going to turn this in natural color just for a second. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are, pop, those are uh, poplar. So what we can actually see here very clearly is that there is a stand of hardwood with a component of overtopping and declining aspen. And so if this were your property, this would be a stand that would probably be managed separately from the others. And if you wanted to get a little more micromanaging in your, in your analysis, um, you can even break this maybe into three different stands. We have one stand here that looks like it has more softwood in the understory. We have one here that looks a little more even age with more um, hardwood in between the declining aspen. And then this looks maybe like more conventional mixed wood right here. And of course, as we look, we can just continue to see these differences in stand compositions. We have a similar stand right here. We have another stand down here. And then we're getting into a completely different forest type over in this area. So this simply is where I love to use infrared imagery. Um, I'm really big on stand level management. And so being able to see and differentiate these stands in your forest uh, is a huge deal, especially if you have a larger property. However, there is another infrared layer here that I want to show you guys, and it is new to me, so I'm still learning how to use it in the most effective manner, uh, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Uh, so of course, this color infrared layer, again, this is measuring just the nominal infrared reflectance and uh, then transposing it into a visible red. But we have here the NDVI layer, or the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. So what this is doing is instead of converting the near-infrared reflectance into visible color is trying to take it and make a quantifiable metric. So to be simplistic, uh, the more green areas are areas where more infrared light is reflected back, and the less green and more red areas are where less infrared light is reflected back. And this can actually be used as a metric for the health of the forest or even individual trees if they're large enough to show up on the imagery. Because again, the infrared reflectance of the foliage is actually happening on the cellular level. It's an active process. And so as trees become less healthy, they reflect less infrared light as a function of photosynthetic activity. So here on the NDVI layer, we can actually see those individual declining aspen trees. And I should qualify what I said. I'm not 100% certain those are in fact aspen, uh, but knowing the composition of a lot of the area around Baxter Park, and also, you know, just using my best judgment, I do think those are aspen that are basically dead. They could possibly be some cedar or even some white birch. Uh, that does happen. It's kind of on a slope here because we can look at the terrain model. We can see it is kind of on a, a mountainside. So I do think these ones are aspen, but you can uh, correct me if you disagree. But in any case, we can clearly see that they're giving off very low reflectance. In fact, some of them just aren't reflecting any infrared at all. They're almost red. Um, which is what you'd expect if there's a total gap in the canopy, like right here. So if you look at natural color, we can see there's actually a small gap in the canopy here. Um, so if we're seeing red, excuse me, uh, red values, that means that we're getting very low levels of reflectance. So these trees are very unhealthy, very much in decline. Same with this area right here. We have a lot of bare ground, but also uh, some patches of very low reflectance. And if we look at the natural color, we can clearly see that there are some holes in this forest. And if we turn off the imagery and just look at the LiDAR slope model, we can tell that this is very rocky ground. So probably uh, excessively drained and just a very stre stressful site for those trees. So we can tell that this is just not an ideal place um, for a tree to grow. And we're getting very low levels of reflectance because of that. So like I said, this layer itself is still pretty new to me. So I'm still learning its strengths, weaknesses, and overall limitations. Um, but let me just show you what I found so far. There is a pretty big weakness to this. Okay, so we're back on the color infrared. And right now we're actually in an area in the Adirondack region of New York. And as you can see, we got some yellows in with the red now, and it kind of looks like a bowl of fruity pebbles or something. 
Uh, honestly, it looks like it's, it would be pretty good to eat. Um, but that is because this photograph was taken in the fall, and we actually have some fall foliage in here. So uh, the yellow areas in the infrared are actually already starting to turn. So maybe some red maple and sugar maple in there, and it's showing up on the color infrared as yellow. Now, in a sense, that's actually great because like I said, uh, my favorite use of infrared imagery is just to delineate stands so you can better break your forest into manageable units. But if you wanna use the NDVI layer, the problem is those leaves are going to show up as unhealthy because they're already starting to lose chlorophyll. So if we look at the NDVI layer, we can already clearly see that. Those trees that are starting to lose color are showing up as less vivid. They're not reflecting as much near infrared light. So you can't fairly judge the situation and say that those trees aren't healthy. Now, is it true that a tree that is more stressed is going to turn color earlier? Yes, absolutely. So that could still be true, but depending on when the actual nape imagery was taken, and those are the aerial images that uh, this layer is based on, it's going to change the exact result you get, specifically with the NDVI. So suffice to say, if the imagery was taken in the middle of summer, uh, the NDVI layer works pretty good, but if the imagery was taken more into the fall foliage season, it's not as reliable, but it's still pretty cool. And uh, depending on your own preferences, it can be just a different way to visualize that infrared spectrum. So that's all for now, guys. I did just put these layers up last week. So I wanted to show you not only the advantages of color infrared imagery, but how you can use them yourself. And also don't forget, we do have the LiDAR hillshade and slope models as well. So those are really cool to... Uh, play around with and uh, we have another very big update coming shortly in the next few weeks. Uh, I have a whole cruising and inventory management system coming that will be integrated in with this mapping system itself. Um, so I'm really excited to release that soon. So if you want to grab access to not only these infrared and LiDAR data layers but also the uh, cruising and inventory update in any future releases, go ahead and grab a lifetime membership for Silvicultural. It's a one-time payment and you get access to everything for life as we continue to grow and develop. And if you don't want to do that right now, you can also just pay for a monthly membership. So that's a choice as well. So anyway, guys, that's all for now and I will catch you later.